Jerry Romano and I love to cook. I like food that is easy to prepare and tastes great. Today I'll show you my version of brick oven pizza. There are many opinions about how to make it and who makes the best pizza as well as a variety of techniques. I'll show you a couple of my tips you can do at home to make brick oven pizza as good as you can get anywhere. If you've never made pizza or bread from scratch, it's easy to do. If you don't get it right the first time, it's okay. I've had plenty of kitchen disasters. A shortcut is to buy pizza dough at the supermarket or your local pizzeria. These are enough ingredients to make two large pies. One and one third cup of water. Three teaspoons of active dry yeast. I like to add about a half a teaspoon of honey, which helps activate the yeast. Give it a good stir and let it rest until it foams. It'll take about 10 minutes. If you're not sure about how warm the water should be, just keep it under 105 degrees. 10 minutes have gone by and now the yeast is activated. Let's pour in the yeast mixture. Eight teaspoons of olive oil and two teaspoons of salt and finally four cups of zero zero flour. I'm using imported zero zero flour which is finely ground and has lower glutens than other flours. I also think it tastes great. Now if you don't have a mixer you can do this by hand but this certainly saves a lot of time. Okay, let's take the dough out, let's shape it into a ball, we can work it on a floured surface, that way it won't stick to your hands, then we're going to put it in the ball, dust it with some flour, put a cloth over the top, and in about an hour to an hour and a half, it's going to double in size. Here's one of my tips for making brick oven pizza. You can get fire bricks at a building supply store for about $2 each and they'll last for years. This oven is 36 inches wide and 12 bricks cover most of it. They're also great for baking bread. It's been about an hour. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, it's doubled in size. Let's punch the air out of it. That air Now set your oven to 500 degrees. Now we're done with the second rise. Let's take it out of the bowl and put it on a floured surface. Cut it in half. Work it into a round shape. Then flatten it on a floured surface with your fingertips. You can use a rolling pin to stretch it out the rest of the way. Turning it over is needed. If you find the dough has too much tension, let it rest for a few minutes and the dough will relax and you'll be able to stretch it out again. If you have a peel, generously dust it with semolina flour, flour, or fine corn flour. If you don't have a peel, you can use the back of a sheet pan or cook it in an oiled sheet pan. You want to work quickly and not let the pizza sit on the peel for too long because the flour will be absorbed by the pizza and stick to the peel. Okay, here's another tip. I put the cheese on first, about one cup for a pie this size. I'm using my homemade San Marzano tomato sauce, and this is my last tip. Heat the sauce up so it doesn't have to come up from room temperature in the oven.
Add a little bit of black pepper, some oregano, and some extra virgin olive oil. Slide it into the 500 degree oven and we'll come back to check on it in five to seven minutes. Let's rotate it. I like to flip the top. It smells great. Let's cut it up. Can't wait to dig into this. Here's the other pie I made. It has sausage, artichokes, and Kalamata olives. Well, let's see what it tastes like. Mmm! That is some fantastic pizza. I wish you could be here to share it with me. Manja bevy.